Fellow Gambians, ladies and gentlemen, as we gather here today as Gambians, united in our common desire for democratic and non-violent change towards progress, let us remember those of our fellow Gambians who share the same values for a free and democratic Gambia. Among them, the two solos who share a common name and common martyrdom, and the 11 ladies and 19 gentlemen and leader of the UDP, Honorable Usain Udabo, for they are all truly men and women. Ladies and gentlemen who have sacrificed their time, energy and effort to promote democracy in the Gambia. Let us remember and honor them in our deliberations. Today, I present to you the forward to my manifesto that is change for a better Gambia, change that brings progress, change is certain, but progress depends on the choices we make today for tomorrow and the courage and fortitude to meet our challenges. Gambians are hardworking and peace-loving people. In the last two decades, I have traversed the length and breadth of this country. I have met hardworking men and women in the city, towns and villages, and have heard your stories and aspirations. I have also heard your frustrations. I am inspired and motivated by you, the Gambians, by your desire for change in the face of immense economic hardship, restrictions of our freedom and personal liberty, alerted by a deep sense of concern for the Gambia, committed to our country's advancement, unfettered by repression, abuse, impunity, and persecution. I have observed the current dispensation over the years. What I have seen is a deteriorating Gambia with deteriorating institutions, where those in authority abuse state power to instill fear and hopelessness within the people. Gambians today are not free to say what they think. Fear and terror, through the use of state power, have so gripped the people that most will look behind their shoulders before they speak. The immediate and compelling task before us all is to awaken our consciousness of the sovereign power that resides in us, the people, to, uh, to use our votes as the instruments of change to free ourselves from the rule of fear and terror unleashed by a regime that created a series of laws or made amendments to existing laws that erode the rights and freedoms enshrined in the Constitution. I also observed the trends and patterns of the systematic mismanagement of our limited resources. Two decades of APRC misrule witnessed a series of false starts. While Gambians were yearning for results, APRC's visions became mere illusions and so-called operations were compromised. <laughs> During the recent past, the Gambia's economy has been challenged by shocks Lightly domestic and to a lesser extent external, resulting in low growth and resurgence inflation. The financial position weakened considerably, considerably, compounded by weak policy implementation, particularly as regards excessive spending relative to mobilization and dwindling external budgetary support. <laughs> Those in power are not listening to the demands for political or economic reform. Conditions for political participation have been so crafted that political pluralism has been curtailed, generating a feeling of powerlessness among many. Too much power is concentrated in too few hands. We need a new approach to government that involves the people in decisions that affect them. Those who make decisions on behalf of others are too often not accountable. I will restore the sovereignty of the people and impunity and decentralized authority and power. It is my fervent belief and conviction that we can bring about change for a better Gambia by directing our efforts and political capital towards one end, the singular pragmatic goal 
of ushering in a new and third republic that brings progress by building strong democratic institutions. And institutions repealing the obnoxious laws that restrict our freedom and liberty, building a strong economy and leveling the political playing field so that the sovereign will of the Gambians will always prevail in their choice of leadership. I am committed, if elected, to serve for one five-year term only, working with all those who have the capacity and the commitment to salvage the Gambia as it totters on the brink of total collapse. Nothing less than the fate of our nation and the future of our children hang in the balance. We cannot walk it alone, neither can we turn back. Together, we can bring the change that is needed. Principles and values need not be compromised, but strategies and tactics must be flexible enough to make progress possible, especially under the difficult political condition we currently face. Everything I learned in my years of work with the women, men, and the youth of this country and in academia has convinced me that Gambians need a president that will serve them, not one that they should serve, not one that looks down on them, but a president who will uphold the constitution, the rule of law, and restore good governance. A government that will bring economic prosperity to Gambians. People want more say in the decisions that affect their lives. The old command and control and, the, and, and control politics, doing things to and for people, but never with them, has not and will not work. True democracy does not mean voting every five years. True democracy requires the active participation of all citizens in planning the development programs and activities for their localities, working with their wards, village development committees, and other development committees, allowing people affected to take leadership in advancing the best interests based on the common good. Together we can stop further degeneration of our beloved country and contribute to give it a new lease of life where hope, love, and appreciation of each other Respect for fundamental freedom, dignity of the person, rule of law, and peace will thrive in an entity that is nothing other than Gambian. <laughs> ensuring, that, ensuring that nobody is victimized on the basis of tribe, religion, or political affiliation. For this is the true nature of the Gambian people. Gambians face a dire situation with the APRC regime. And every Gambian has a story to tell. But I urge you to muster courage and strength so that we can make the Gambia better. I seek your support in our quest to bring the Gambia out of isolation, to, bring, to build bridges and linkages with people of other nations in partnership that safeguard, protect, and promote the interests of the Gambia as a sovereign state. Gambia's interest is best served by engaging with other nation states and being part of the wider international community. I want us to usher in a Gambia that will bring on board the hearts and minds of all Gambians in the diaspora, including, including those who left the country because of the tribulations, the persecutions, fear, and abuses they face as private citizens, entrepreneurs, academics, politicians, and activists. But more than anything else, a new Gambia of economic prosperity, freedom, rule of law, peace, and stability. The youth of this country, the youth of this country are frustrated and their hopes dashed under this regime. Those born at the cusp of the Second Republic have now come of age. Twenty years of APRC rule has failed to give them opportunities to fulfill their aspirations and achieve their goals. What their country has failed to give them, i.e. jobs, quality education, good health care, and decent living, they try to seek elsewhere, embarking on perilous journeys across the harsh desert 
and the wide Mediterranean. The Gambian, the Gambian needs you most now of all times as nation builders and agents of change to build a better Gambia for us all. The belief that the APRC cannot be defeated by election is a misconception that works in their favor. Your votes can defeat the APRC and your weapons to effect change, the change you desire. Under our sovereign third republic can constitution, we can be the architects of our own destiny. <laughs> by, by investing more in the productive base of the economy, in the private as well as the public sector, by avoiding wasteful spending, we will create more jobs that would motivate the young generation of school leavers and job seekers remain in the country. We would motivate and encourage Gambian scholars and academics abroad to return and contribute their quota. We would encourage and lower the private sector to open opportunities to the young people to earn a decent living and fulfill their dreams. We must preserve the Gambia for our children and the future generation and must open the doors for development. We cannot afford to leave matters to chance. Heaven helps those who help themselves. Hardworking Gambians, particularly women of this country, have waited far too long for mainstream politicians entrusted to address the things that matter to you, family, home, work, and economy. Garden inputs, access to credit, and market outlets for your garden produce. Over the years, you have been lobbied. You have lobbied government to pass bills that could bring meaningful change to the lives of the women and men of this country. You have much to protest against rape and domestic violence and other rights violation, and you have campaigned for more inclusiveness for women in decision making. Women can no longer remain as onlookers and cheerleaders. We can, together with the youth and men of the con this country, work to bring about unprecedented development in record time. It is possible. Your personal concerns... <laughs>